So we're here sampling today. We're sampling a windrow. We're looking at method A. So method A for sampling, it relates to windrows that have been thoroughly homogenised and mixed. So we've got here a row where we've had the windrow turner just come along it. It's a purpose specific windrow, runs along, has a horizontal drum, rotates around, beats all the material up, breaks up clumps, thoroughly mixes it, incorporates moisture and distributes that through the mixture. So we've got a really thorough and homogenous mix. Now that having just been implemented, it's a pretty easy thing for us to sample. We can go and simply take, grab samples from along the edge. We want to do that almost straight away because the, the outside will dry out and we don't want to take material right from the edge. We want to take in and get a plug of material. So effectively along this windrow we've got something in the order of 600 cubic metres. So the standard would tell us, and it's adapted from the British and European standard, the standard would tell us that for a 600 cubic metre windrow we need a minimum of 13 incremental samples. That means 13 sampling points just like this where we're extracting a sample of adequate size and putting that into our clean buckets to take back to mix up into a composite sample that then we can have assessed. So right for the moment, for a windrow of this volume, 600 odd cubic metres, it's 13, a minimum of 13 samples. If you have a look on the slide, you'll see that there's a range of different um, sample numbers or minimum number of samples that relate to different volumes. You'll also see that there's a minimum sample size that relates to the size of particles in the compost pile. If the particles are too large or the larger size particles in the pile, the larger the sample you need to get because you don't want to avoid the larger particles in your sampling as a result of trying to get too small an incremental sample from each point. So you're trying to get a representative mix of what's in the pile. That's what you want to have tested. Okay, so back to the pile now. We need to make sure that all our materials are clean. So clean spades, clean buckets. We need to make sure that we're sampling from the white right windrow. So I've got my batch form here that I'm tracking my material with. I've checked I'm at the right windrow. Here on my batch tracking form, for this windrow, I'm identifying that I'm sampling. Here on my sample prep form, I'm identifying that the sample that I'm going to put the label into this bucket for to send to the lab, that it identifies it's from this windrow. So we can track, backtrack right back through the system and we know the results from our test will be attributable to this pile of compost and that the sample that we took was representative of the material in this, this part of the compost. So because this is a nominal 50 mil minus grind, for each incremental sample at each sampling point, we need a minimum of four litres. So as to not miss out on getting the full mix of particles, I like to use a trenching shovel. The trenching shovel allows me to get something in the order of a litre to two litres per shovel load. So a nice flat shovel full is about one litre, a level shovel. A heap shovel will get me one and a half to two litres. So I can keep track of how much material I'm getting just because of the tool that I've used. But the buckets, the spade, they're all nice and clean. I'll use the lids on these, so once I've finished taking the samples, I'll pop the lids on for when I'm carrying them back to avoid any potential for cross-contamination from windblown materials over the rest of the site. So let's wander down the windrow. We'll go and get ourselves our 13 odd sampling sites, extracting from both sides evenly along the pile. So in essence, I'm getting from both sides of the pile, so it won't be an odd number, it'll be an even number. So it'll probably be more like 14 or 16 samples that I'll take. Each one I'll get within this range that's easy to access, remembering this has been thoroughly mixed, but we're not scraping off the surface. That'll be disproportionately dry or wet, depending on ambient conditions. I'm digging in and taking a plug. All of those will be mixed together into a composite sample, and then I'll extract my representative subsample from that, which will be our sample for test. You need to make sure the sample you're sending off for test is represented of this pile, otherwise you're wasting your money. Otherwise you can't provide your customers with the advice they need about how to best use this material, because it won't be characterised effectively. You can't just grab a sample from anywhere in the pile and hope it is representative of the pile as a whole.
The sample for testing, it needs to be a statistically valid and representative sample of the entire mass of material with incremental samples of a suitable size taken from a large enough number of sampling sites in a manner that avoids bias. These incremental samples are then mixed to form a representative composite sample. Now this is supposed to best represent material of average characteristics for the entire pile. A representative subsample for tests can then be obtained from this composite sample. Again, for this pile with a nominal particle size of up to about 50 millimetres, to conduct the full range of tests on representative materials for each test in the lab, we only need a representative sample of about 20 litres. That's it for this episode. If you head along to the Compost TV YouTube channel, you'll find all the other videos. Or you can head to the RAU website, www.recycledorganics.com you'll find loads of information for download and also access to services for all your composting adventures. Thanks for watching.